Great. Thank you very much, Michael, and thank you all for coming this morning. Um, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the structure of the sector accounts and, um, sorry, uh, talk about some of the concepts in the accounts, their breadth and their depth, uh, look at some of the results that come out of this year's um, presentation of the accounts, and compare them to some of the other measures of globalisation that we present in the CSO. So then starting with the, the structure of the accounts, the, um, the breadth, if you want to call it that, the sector accounts present Ireland's accounts together with our transactions with the rest of the world. So they integrate all the data from the balance of payments and they're coherent with the balance of payments data, which is the rest of the world in the sector accounts. And then we break up Ireland's domestic economy into, uh, not according to the kinds of activity they engage in, like education or agriculture, but by the kinds of institutional units that are carrying out the activity. So we divide it into corporations, government and households, which as you can imagine all have very different economic uh, impacts on the economy. And then corporations are divided into the non-financial like industry and the financial like banks and so on. Um, in the quarterly accounts we combine households and non-profits and we split them out in the annual accounts. And then in this year's institutional sector accounts we have divided out non-financial corporations three ways into the foreign multinationals, the domestic corporations, and then the redomiciled PLCs. So the redomiciled PLCs are, by any international definition, uh, Irish domestic corporations. They're headquartered here, they're tax resident here, their board meets here, um, they have large assets held in Ireland uh, in their subsidiaries overseas, and they receive dividends and reinvested earnings on those assets. But they have very little interaction with the rest of the economy. So in the sector accounts, we're going to take them out so that we don't distort the domestic economy and treat them as S11C. And then we've also divided up the financial corporations into the foreign-owned banks and insurers and the domestic financial corporations. So at the most granular level, we're divided domestic economy eight ways. And then, um, sorry, so then just to say a bit more about what we mean by the foreign corporations. The non-financial foreign corporations are, uh, include what we call the large cases unit um, companies. So these are the 50 or so largest multinationals in Ireland that we treat in a particular way in the CSO because they need so much attention. They have a significant presence here. They have significant employment factories, offices here. Um, and they're also part of a much larger global value chain. They obviously have foreign owners that they're paying out to. They have foreign subsidiaries often, and they're often engaged in contract manufacturing with the rest of the world. The non-financial foreign corporations also includes lots of uh, companies in trade, like the high street retailers and supermarkets. Aircraft leasing companies are making a lot of profit here. Most of them are foreign owned. Um, S11C are the redomiciles, which I've spoken about. And then uh, S12A are the foreign owned financial corporations. So we can all think of foreign owned banks, funds, and insurers, and so on. So then within the accounts, there is uh, a sequence of accounts. So this is, if you like, the, the, the depth or the height of the account. So there's a sequence in that there is an opening balance, transactions, and a closing balance. And then that closing balance is the opening balance of the next account. So we start in the accounts with the output, which is like the sales, subtract the intermediate consumption, raw materials, and so on. And that gives you gross value added for the sector. And then for the economy as a whole, if you add product taxes like VAT and subtract subsidies, you get gross domestic product. Uh, but then if you go from gross value added in the, the next account, uh, the gross value added is the opening balance of the generation of income account there in orange. So you subtract production taxes, let subsidies like rates and pay to employees, and that gives you the gross operating surplus in the sector. So the production taxes less subsidies are a relatively small part of that, and sometimes we roll them up with the operating surplus, and we talk about operating surplus at basic prices. So in general, we talk about gross operating surplus plus compensation of employees is gross value added, and I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that. Um, and then that gross operating surplus is the start of the uh, distribution of primary income account. So in this account, we see the pay coming into the employees. So uh, households receive most of the pay. Some of it goes to cross-border workers. And then you adjust for the investment income, so interest, dividends, reinvested earnings, income on funds like pension fund income, and everything that you're paying out as well. 
and that gives you the balance of primary incomes for each sector and the gross national income for the economy as a whole. So Ireland's uh, gross national income is largely affected by the investment income outflows as profits are flowing out to, to, to the owners of the foreign multinationals here. And we'll come back to that. And then you have the secondary distribution of income. So households pay income tax, corporations pay corporation tax, government takes all that in. Um, households pay pension contributions, they pay PRSI, and that gets paid out to pensioners and those in receipt of child benefit and so on. And then you're left with the gross disposable income, which is an important indicator for households. And then you have final consumption. Only households, government, and nonprofits pay final consumption, and that leaves you with your gross saving. Um, and then in the uh, change in net worth from saving and capital transfer, you take your gross saving and subtract all the depreciation, consumption of fixed capital, and that gives you a net figure. And then you subtract capital transfers, investment grants paid out, or inheritance tax paid, and that gives you your change in net worth from saving and capital transfers. And then the last part of the account, uh, you adjust for capital investment. So this is all your um, fixed capital formation, imports of intellectual property, building, uh, machinery and equipment, um, all those other assets, fixed assets, other assets like non-produced assets such as land. Uh, you add back the depreciation, you deduct it in the previous account, so we're back to talking about gross, and that gives you the net lending borrowing for the sector or for the economy as a whole. And then that goes on down into the financial account where you can see how uh, that net lending or borrowing might contribute to reducing your loans or increasing your equity holdings and so on in the financial account, which Chris is going to talk a bit more about later. So just to observe there, in the transition from the green to the, bl the blue to the green, from gross saving to net lending, you're adding and subtracting depreciation. So the real difference between gross saving is just capital transfers and capital investment, uh, which I'll talk about later. Um, and then the rest of the world account looks likely different because the rest of the world doesn't have any gross value added. Um, the rest of the world account is just like the balance of payments flipped. So when we have goods imports, that's a positive for the rest of the world, and exports are a negative. So you take goods and services, imports, less exports, gives you your goods and services balance. Then your investment income, which I spoke about, things like interest and dividends, and then any cross-border workers, which is a small, small element in Ireland, gives you your net factor income. You add those two, and any secondary income transfers, so again, income and corporation tax paid cross-border, pension contributions and benefits paid across border. That's all the secondary income. Our EU contributions are in secondary income as well. And that gives you the current account balance. Then you adjust for any capital transfers that are going across border, and that gives you a net lending borrowing for the rest of the world, which is the same with the opposite sign as the net lending borrowing of the domestic economy. And then the change in the international investment position due to transactions should be the same as the net lending borrowing with a few errors and emissions for the whole account. So the current account balance, uh, the difference between the current account balance and net lending in the green there is just capital transfers. And as we saw earlier, the difference between gross saving and net lending borrowing is capital investment plus capital transfers. So by a bit of uh, um, cancelling both sides, gross saving plus capital investments, saving less investment is the current account balance. And uh, I think James is going to talk about that a bit later. So that's the, the, the depth of the account. Uh, it's a long sequence of account that gives you a lot of detail about all the transactions in the economy. So some of the results then um, that come out of that when you break it down, uh, I want to talk about 2017 because we've previously published the large cases unit data in 2017 as a proxy for what the rest of the world, uh, sorry, what the foreign multinationals here are, are contributing to the economy. So domestic corporations had uh, 125 billion of gross value added in 2017. Uh, the LCU group had 101 billion, and then the other foreign corporations had about 54 billion. So the LCU are obviously a huge part of the foreign multinationals here, but in treating them as a proxy for the whole, we're obviously missing quite a lot of companies that are uh, operating in the Irish economy. 
And then when you break that down into the compensation of employees or pay and profits, uh, the pie looks very different for compensation of employees. 75% uh, is coming from domestic, uh, domestic sectors, which is government and corporations and to some extent households. <coughs> LCU are, contribute 5% and then the other foreign corporations 20%. And the other part of gross value added then is the operating surplus, which domestic corporations have 30%. The majority is made by the large cases unit companies, 51%. And then the other foreign corporations have a, a 19% of the, of the uh, profits made here. So you can see that the other foreign corporations have quite a different structure to their makeup to uh, the LCU companies. And the domestic companies have a very different structure again. Um, so looking at that breakdown in a different way, uh, gross value added and operating surplus and COE give you the profit share. So the profit share is the proportion of gross value added that is uh, operating surplus. Gross value added that is profit, yeah. So the green bars represent the domestic economy and the orange bars represent the, uh, sorry, the green bars represent domestic corporations and the orange bars represent the foreign owned uh, non-financial corporations. And the dark, dark green is uh, profit, light green is COE, dark orange is profit, light orange is COE, and then the blue line at the top gives you the profit share of foreign-owned corporations, non-financial corporations, which you can see is up around 90%, whereas when you take them out and you just look at the domestic, you have a profit share that's around uh, 35%, 40%, which is much more like an EU average. Um, I'm just going to pull out some of the interesting statistics here uh, just to encourage you to explore some of the data a bit more. This is the net operating surplus in the economy. So we've gone from gross to net by subtracting the depreciation uh, when we exclude the foreign corporations. So this includes uh, government, non-financial corporations and households and financial corporations. And I've broken out the households here into the imputed rent part and the, and the rest. So the imputed rent is the rent you pay yourself if you own your house with or without a mortgage. You, we see it as some expenditure by you in your final consumption and income to you in your operating surplus. So it's a conceptual adjustment. You never see that if you own your own house. Uh, but the rest of the households and nonprofits is the mixed income or the self-employed income. So that's about 14 billion in, uh, sorry, this is 2018. That's about 14 billion compared to the domestic non-financials, which is about 19 billion. So when you look at table one of the NIE, you see the self-employed income kind of gets swamped by everything else that's there. But when you split it out like this and just look at the, uh, the domestic sectors, you can see that those small enterprises are, are much more, look much more significant. Um, and this is the same, uh, the same data, just looking at it over time. You can see back in 2013, that mixed income was about 10.4 billion. And then at the bottom there, the domestic non-financials had a similar uh, net operating surplus. And as they both grow over time, the non-financials grow up to 19, the corporations grow up to 19, and then the households up to 13.8. So it's obviously much more growth in the, in the corporation sector, but it's a dynamic picture because somebody who was self-employed in 2013 might have incorporated as they grew and become part of the non-financial corporations sector. Um, in this year's accounts, we've also added a new table, further breakdown, where we give uh, pay, compensation employees, profit, gross operating surplus, and gross value added, divided into institutional sector. And then within each institutional sector, we've broken down into the NACE sector, the economic activity sector. So um, you get a much more detailed view of where these variables are coming from. So just to take some of the, uh, some of the results that this table, which is StatBank table ISA05, if you want to have a look at it. Um, this is what the gross value added in the economy as a whole looks like. Uh, and as you can see, it's completely dominated by gross value added in the, um, in the industrial sector uh, by foreign owned multinationals. And you can see the multinationals, the orange there, are dominant in ICT. They're really significant in finance and insurance. Uh, and trade and so on. When you take out the foreign-owned, uh, the GVA of foreign-owned multinationals, 
the domestic picture looks very different. So now other services is the largest single part. That includes the imputed rent. Um, and after that, education and health, uh, trade, industry, also very significant. Um, that other services includes things like commercial rents, uh, gambling, uh, all kinds of agency workers, everything like that. Um, so the picture looks very different when you take out the foreign multinationals. I should say, in taking out the, their GVA, you're also taking out all the COE they're paying as well. So um, that's, that's staying in the economy. This is the, a look at the profit share of some of the domestic corporations. Um, so you can see the, uh, the green bars there are the operating surplus and the orange bars are the pay to employees. So um, the profit share is pretty high in industry and in finance uh, and insurance. Um, but in the more labour intensive activities like education, um, the professions, accommodation, hotels and restaurants, the profit share is, is much lower for the domestic corporations. Um, uh, so then just talking about staying with gross value added and moving on to some of the other measures we produce in the CSO. Um, we produce a quarterly and annual foreign dominated sectors release where we take these sectors like uh, pharma, uh, electronics, medical devices, ICT, as a proxy for the foreign multinational activity here. That's given in current and constant price annually and quarterly and goes back to 95. Um, you could also derive from the sector accounts some measure of the gross value added of the foreign multinationals by taking the foreign multinationals as described in the sector accounts, uh, which will include parts of all NACE activity sectors. Now this only goes back to 2013 and it's, it's current price only. So um, when you can put the two side by side of a derived, um, a derived GVA of foreign from the sector accounts, that gives you the, the greeny blue line there and then the published GVA of foreign dominated sectors is, is the orange. So you can see that in the sector accounts we're treating more as foreign owned because we have parts of all the NACE sectors. Um, but the trend is the same in both, so they're, they're both pointing towards the same, the same um, results. Uh, and then moving down beyond operating surplus, the next part of the account was the, uh, the investment income, interest, dividends, and so on. So for Ireland as a whole, and you can see that it's dominated by the outflows of the foreign non-financials. They're paying their dividends, their profits as dividends and reinvested earnings out. The redomiciled PLCs are receiving lots of um, income from their subsidiaries. The foreign, the, sorry, the financial corporations have lots of gross flows, but they largely net out. Government is paying its debt. Households are, in general, increasing their uh, have a an, an income from their their pension funds, particularly. And then, when you move beyond the net investment income, you get to the. Uh, the balance of primary incomes or the GNI for the economy as a whole. So you might be familiar from the main national accounts we produce this modified GNI or GNI star um, with, our, with our NIE and, that, and this is the transition from GDP to GNP to GNI and then you make some adjustments to get to, to GNI, modified GNI. Um, so as we said, GNI is something that comes out in the sector accounts. The adjustments there in the main aggregates are the factor income of the redomiciled PLCs and then the depreciation on those assets that are mostly foreign owned, aircraft, IP, R&D imports. So you could also derive, again, a modified GNI. So modified GNI there is meant to represent the income of the domestic economy. So you could derive a similar measure by taking out the foreign corporations from the sector accounts. Uh, and in such a case, you would be also removing all of the factory income of the redomiciled PLCs, all of their depreciation, including other kinds of depreciation, like in buildings and uh, uh, machinery and equipment. And again, this is, so this is another comparison of an existing measure we produce. So the published GNI, start modified GNI is there in orange and uh, the derived indicator, if you like, from the sector accounts in the bluey green. And you can see that the sector accounts, you would be taking out more, uh, you'd be leaving a smaller domestic economy, you'd be taking out more because we're treating more as foreign. 
Um, but again, the trend is the same. So published GNI is giving you a, a good indicator of where the foreign-owned multinational, where the domestic is going. So that's a kind of whirlwind through the accounts, more in clear, to encourage you to, to explore them than to give a full picture of it. But I suppose my summary would be there, these accounts are a very rich and coherent picture of the economy. Um, they are the fullest picture of the foreign-owned corporations here. So we are including not just the um, corporations like the LCU, but those that are uh, in our high streets and have a large employment here. And um, so it's the fullest picture of foreign-owned corporations. And all economies have foreign-owned corporations working within them. It's about 25% in the EU average. So you would not like to compare this to a, an unadjusted picture for any other economy. And also, I think these accounts are now giving a very good insight into domestic enterprises like profit share and the role of small, small enterprises. Um, so that's a, a flavor of the accounts. I think we'll, sorry, we'll take questions if there's anything urgent or then if there's anything you want to save to the end, we can do that. <laughs>